If you're looking at this video, you should have already done this worksheet. If you haven't already done it, then go back, try your best on it, and come back to this video, please. Okay, for those of you who have done the video, here are the answers and the explanations behind them. So the first question asks whether or not the trait is dominant or recessive. So, for, we're going to use that chart that we made when we went through the pedigree analysis guided practice, and it asks if unaffected parents have affected offspring. The first place I want to look is right here. We have one affected parent here, so that probably isn't going to help me. So now I want to find a spot where I have two unaffected parents, and I have two spots where that happens, here and here. Both parents 1 and 2 in generation 2 and parents 4 and 5 in generation 2 are unaffected, but both of them have affected offspring. So now I know that it's a recessive trait. The, question, the next question is whether the trait is autosomal or sex-linked. If it's autosomal, both sexes are affected. If it's sex-linked, only men usually are affected. So um, this trait equally affects men and women. Well almost equally. There's four women who have the trait, one, two, three, four, and there's five guys who have the trait, one, two, three, four, five. So we know that this is probably autosomal because it affects both sexes. Now you want to write down the genotypes of all the individuals in the pedigree, all the ones that you can figure out at least. So um, in order to do that, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. And let me drag that over so you guys can see the whole thing. <laughs> Hold on just a second. All right. So you can see most of it here. Um, we're missing four, five, and six. Generation four, numbers five and six, and generation five, numbers one and two. But we got most of them. Okay, so I know since this is a recessive trait that anyone who has the trait is homozygous dominant. So, homozygous recessive, excuse me. So, these, anyone who has black shading should be two little alleles. If there are two unaffected parents or one unaffected parent, so basically if either parent is unaffected, that person has and has an affected child. That person has to be heterozygous. Okay, and if you did out of Punnett square, you would see why. But if a parent has an affected child, the parent has to be heterozygous. So we know that numbers one in the first generation, number one, two, four, and five in the second generation are all heterozygous. So I did a few there, but you can write in the rest on your own. Um, the rest of the the organisms or individuals, we can't really tell whether or not they're heterozygous or homozygous. So we don't really know. Um, and so I'm going to leave the rest of those blank. So again, if they have a child who has the trait, we know that that person is heterozygous. If they have the trait, we know they're homozygous recessive. But we can't tell if they don't have children if they're necessarily homozygous dominant or heterozygous. So those are as many as I'm going to do for right now. Again, you should do more than that. So let's zoom out again and see what our genotypes are. Oh, zoomed out a little too much. Okay, so the next question says, what is the genotype of individual 4-2? So individual 4-2 is right here. Okay, we have generation 4, number 2. So this is individual 2 right here. If you look at her parents, the mom is either homozygous dominant or heterozygous. We don't really know which one. The dad is homozygous recessive. In order for number two not to have the trait in question, she has to be heterozygous. She gets one recessive allele from her dad and one dominant allele from her mom. So trait individual 4-2 has to be heterozygous. Individual 4-6, which is over here, married into the family. We don't know anything about individual 4-6's parents. However, individual 4-6 had children. He had children with this woman right here. One of his children has the trait in question and one does not. 
And because one of his children has the trait in question, we know that he has to be heterozygous as well. This child has two recessive alleles. She gets one from the mom and one from the dad. So we know that he has to have at least one. And then the last question is, I can't really see it, hold on. The last question is, what is the genotype of individual 1-1? One, one? And again, we already figured that out. We figured out that he was heterozygous because he had a child that has the trait in question. Now let's switch to our next part of the worksheet, which is the alcaptonuria Al questions. Okay, so the first thing we want to figure out is whether it's a dominant or a recessive allele. So we only see one affected person in this offspring. And that's this guy right here. He has unaffected parents, so that tells us that this is a recessive trait. We cannot really tell from this pedigree alone whether it's autosomal or sex-linked because, again, only one person has the trait and it's a guy. However, in the future there could be girls that have the trait in the family, so we really don't know whether it's autosomal or sex-linked. Let's assume that it's a cause, caused by an autosomal allele for number nine. Which individuals are we certain of the genotype? Now, we don't really know very much about these people. We could figure it out. But we know that these two parents, numbers three and four in generation three, have to be heterozygous in order to be, to not show them trait themselves, but to have um, a child that does show the trait. So we know that numbers three and four are heterozygous, which means that their parents are probably, one, at least one of their parents are heterozygous either 1 and 2 in generation 2 or 6 and 7 in generation 2. And we can probably know that one of their parents is heterozygous, but we can't tell which one, but we do know that numbers 3 and 4 are heterozygous in generation 3. Um, let's assume that it's caused by an X-linked allele. Now we know that um, number 4 in generation 3 is heterozygous, but we don't really know anything about number 3 if it's caused by an X-linked allele. Again, dads don't pass their X chromosomes to their sons directly. So, they, we wouldn't be able to tell anything about the dad. If it's a very rare um, autosomal trait or allele, the probability that generation 3-2 is a heterozygote is probably 50%. Um, we, let's say that this guy, number 2, has... Um, is heterozygous and the mom is homozygous. That means that there's a 50% chance, if you did out the Punnett square, that number two would be heterozygous. So we're going to say that's, that's about 50%. Okay, let's look at number 12. Um, probably that 2 4 is heterozygous. Again, probably 50%. One of these parents is probably dominant dominant and one is heterozygous for the, with the, for the trait. So number four is probably 50% chance that it's heterozygous. And last question, um, if it's autosomal and rare, number four, two, again, 50% chance that it's heterozygous um, and a 50% chance that it is homozygous dominant. So um, those three questions have the same answers, but for different reasons. And those are the answers to your worksheet. So I'm hoping that you tried it on your own first because that will definitely help you on the test.